Welcome to season two of the Dr. Nikki Star Show, a podcast to support you in your spiritual awakening and personal development. As a spiritual teacher, healer, and intuitive coach, my intention is to empower you to live your ultimate potential and your ultimate life. As a former medical doctor and mystic, my role is to bridge the gap between science and spirituality to support you in understanding more of your multidimensional aspects. I share on a diverse range of topics and it's all to support your greatest becoming. My mission is to continue reaching millions of people for the healing and awakening of humankind for the creation of the new earth. Thank you for being here. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Nikki Starr and welcome to another episode of the podcast. Today we will be talking about manifestation, how to manifest your dream home specifically. And this topic has come up for me in many podcast interviews. And one I did this year that really got a lot of rave reviews. And I manifested some wild homes in my day. And also at a, being a very young age and living in places that are quite prestigious real estate places, and then supporting my clients in manifesting their dream homes too. And it kind of seems wild and like, how did you even do it? Or like, oh my gosh, that is so crazy. But I want to share everything from like how much I've paid per month in rent and how I didn't always have the deposits up front, but I somehow all worked out and I've lived in four beautiful beach front and sea view homes in Malibu, in Ibiza. And now that there are changes happening in my life and soon enough in the new year, I'll be looking for my next home. I thought it would be nice to share. I shared this process in my Ultimate Woman program as well as others. And I also have my manifestation course if you want to go deeper. But I do want to talk specifically about the manifestations of homes. And I'm going to create an Insta. I've created, by the time this airs, I've already created an Instagram post about this too, like a carousel to kind of go through the different steps. And here, there, I'll break it down in the stepwise basis. But here, I just kind of want to share more of like my thoughts, feelings, the process, and have more of a conversation around it. So, first, I just want to share that I grew up living in all kinds of homes. Like I know when I was first born, my parents lived like in an apartment in Queens. They were 18 years old. I've lived in shared spaces too. Like we lived downstairs from from my grandparents when they purchased a home. And, and that was when we lived in Long Island when I first, like when I was in elementary school. And then we lived in a semi, like a double attached townhouse. So we were kind of between, like a row of a bunch of different houses that were attached Then we upgraded to like a semi-attached house. And then from there, I lived in New York City for college. And so I was in the dorm rooms and I lived in different apartment buildings in New York City as well. I lived on 26th and Park at one point. And then I lived in Stuyvesant Town, which is kind of like a development community buildings. And then I went and I traveled the world and I stayed with friends when I'd travel or I'd stay in beautiful hotels. I even stayed in hostels at one point. I slept in hammocks, went on river boats in the Amazon. I slept on the floor, like literally in the Amazon and also in hammocks in the Amazon and like in these like shack houses that, you know, were just wood and dirt floor. Um, so I really, and, you know, I stayed in luxury five-star hotels, beautiful, like multi-million dollar, beautiful villas, um, everywhere. I've lived all kinds of places. I've lived off grid. I've lived in community. I once lived in a home with 25 other people when I was living in community. I've lived it all, everything from poverty conditions to like the highest luxury conditions. And of all the places that I had ever lived, when I had stayed in Malibu, after I did Vipassana 
And I stayed in the downstairs like they do Airbnb. But because I was friends with their son, they were like, oh, yeah, you could totally just stay here uh, for a few days. And it was the most amazing experience I ever had. I wrote an incredible blog about my Vipassana experience. And this is back, I think, in like 2014. And I can share that in the show notes. And it made me realize like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to live in Malibu someday. Like my writing is just so on point here. And just five years later, I landed in Malibu oceanfront. And I was like, what? How did I do this? (laughs) And I thought it was going to be like this achievement for when I was like older, quote unquote, or like more, like I've made it, quote unquote. And it happened at a time where I had already decided that I wasn't going to be living in community anymore. And I wanted my own home and I didn't want to do share homes anymore. I felt like I kind of had grew up and graduated from that. I really wanted my own space to focus on my mission and my purpose and just like have that sanctuary space for myself. And I had lived in some share houses in Topanga. This is all in Los Angeles at the time right before. And then I had went to house it for this couple that lived off grid in Topanga and like the mountainous parts of it. And while I was there, it, like I just kept hearing like, look at Malibu homes. And in my head, I was just like, what? I had just decided to go all in on my business and create a business from my healing gifts. Whereas before I kind of would, I was a bit of a martyr where I just charged enough or, you know, what, you know, donation base. I wasn't really like making a profit. I was just getting by, but I started to put myself into debt and I actually went bankrupt. And I just decided that I didn't want to live like that anymore. I really wanted to be supported and taken care of. And I had from being a medical doctor to all of my spiritual gifts, I felt I had a lot to offer the world. And so me choosing to go for Malibu was also me choosing to go all in on myself. And I knew that I would show up for my mission in a bigger way if I was living in this beautiful home that I always loved. And I would have events there. And I I made kind of like this pact with the universe of like, I'll have events, I'll write my books, I will have retreats there and bring clients. And I did all of those things. You know, I wrote a few books there that are yet to be published. I have I'll be, I'll write 13 books in my lifetime and I've already written four and I have more in the queue that I've begun. And so actually, if anyone knows any book agents, you can reach out to me. (laughs) I'd love to be published with the top five publishing houses. Any of those would be great. (laughs) And that's also because I had opportunities, but I'm, I'm kind of holding out for, for the top, you know? So anyway, um, I just knew that I was destined for it and I just was feeling the inspired action for it. And I think that's the key too. And even though I didn't have all the money in the bank yet, I had just started to raise my rates into high ticket offers for one-to-one work. And I had just created a women's program and I was, you know, it was like just starting to really take off. And something told me, okay, look at houses from anywhere from 10 K a month rent and under. And I just started to look, I was looking on Zillow and like all those uh, real estate websites. And I decided to just go and look, you know, like I didn't, like I said, I didn't have all the money in the bank. I was like, but something was telling me to just follow my inspired action. So I did. And I went and I saw beautiful places. I saw some places I didn't really love as much. Um, And then another day it was like, expand your search to 15,000. So I did. And I found this one place that was super but I was like, this would really work for a retreat. And it was like a three floor um, townhouse. And it was right on the water, the private beach access. And I was like, huh, this looks really interesting. And I think it was like 11, 12,000 or something. And I was like, okay, maybe I should put this on the list to see. It's like not that much out of the range. And I just continued that and I went to look. And then one day that house that was like 11, 12 went down to like, I don't know, nine or something. Like they really dropped the price. I guess they, no one was wanting to rent it. So I went to see it and I could see why, like, I I also set a, like a list for myself. So this is like a teaching point here and a advice point. And I share all my manifestation protocols in the manifestation course that I have, which I'll share the link in the show notes. 
And this is kind of like a crash course in that, but if you want to, like, I manifest different things in different way, depending on what it is. And what I've shared with my clients and what I did with myself was you write down like the five absolute things that you want in the home. And for me, it was sea view, ocean view, like right on the water. I wanted to be on the water. I didn't want to be like across the PCH up in the Malibu Hills. I wanted to be on the side with the water. I wanted views of the ocean from my bedroom as well as from the living room area because I knew that when I hosted events, I wanted everyone to be able to see and appreciate and live that experience of the ocean. It's so precious. Um, And I wanted it to be like modern and new, like a newer construction. And I wanted to have a lot of light because I'm a very luminous light being, you know, light is food. So when it came time to look, like for me, it was clear. I walk into a place and they might not have had a sunlight. And that's what happens with the way some things are built in Malibu is it can, where the sun goes, it can be dark um, in the part of the house that's like not near the the ocean. And especially if they're, it's like multi-floored. So right away, I would know. I just walk in, I'll be like, nope, nope, not it. Also, I wanted it to be fully furnished. So I had some other requirements too, because I was renting. I didn't want to have to like buy a bunch of furniture and I wanted it to be like a style that I liked more or less. So, well, that I liked, not more or less, right? Because you're living there. You want to like it. So those are my absolutes. Everyone has different ones, but it's like, if it does not meet your absolutes, then you say no. And this helps the universe to bring you exactly what you want. And especially when it comes to like inanimate things like homes, for example, or cars, like, cause then shortly after that, I manifested one of my dream cars, you know? And also I wasn't planning it. It's just that day, the inspired action hit, you know? And, and that's what happens. Like, so it's really important when you're manifesting to follow the nudges that you've received. Even if all the pieces aren't placed yet, like you do what you can in that moment. And so then when I met with the landlords, you know, they actually, their assistant showed it to me at first. And then there, I noticed there was construction next door. So there was this, you know, less ideal situation happening, but I felt like, well, if they lowered the price even more then I would be happy to take it, you know? So in the end, I ended up getting that house for 7,500 a month, which Malibu beachfront is like unheard of. And I remember having one of my clients there who year, like a decade or so before had lived Malibu beachfront. And he was just like, this is a steal. Like, I can't even believe that you got this. And so I felt super happy with it. I lived there for a year. It was amazing. And then I did it again. <laughs> I left Malibu to go to do a community project in Hawaii thinking like, oh yeah, maybe now I want to go back to community living and and then realized, no, I don't. <laughs> so when it was time to come back, again, I did the process of manifesting. And similarly, this time I had added, I wanted a bathtub because that first house didn't have a bathtub and I love baths and I do rituals with baths. And I, and then in the rituality course, I share about different bath rituals. So for my own healing and support, Also, when I work with clients, it's a way I cleanse as well as swimming in the sea, which is why I love living seafront, oceanfront. Well, oceanfront in Malibu, seafront in Europe. And same thing, same process. And this time I was, I did a similar, I think I did 15,000 and below. And I was like, okay, that's, this is what I'm going to look to manifest. And, And I, there weren't that many properties available because with the pandemic, a lot of people were like, because you could go on private beaches in Malibu, even though you weren't able to go outside and do a lot of hikes. And so I just was like, I'm going to do it. And and I, what I forgot to mention too, is I didn't have all the money for the house in Malibu the first time, actually any, actually not the third one, but the first two, well, I'll share the stories, but for that first house, I didn't yet have all the money where I was like, okay, I want it. They went down to 7,500. Also, I thought they might want a co-signer. My parents had said no. And then thankfully, like I was just sharing about it with a client and he was just like, oh yeah, I'll totally co-sign for you. And I was like, oh my God, amazing. And it was just beautiful to see like I support my clients and like they support me too. Like 
in a totally unexpected way. And in the end, they didn't even like run either of our credits. They were just like, yeah, totally. You can just have it. It was like the easiest process ever, like easier than other places where I spent way less money on rent. And right after I said yes, I had a client sign up for a 10K package. And so I was able to like give the deposit to hold it. And then with the launch of my programs, like everything just happened so gracefully and beautifully. And like my mission expanded by me choosing to step into a space that I really loved, even though it might've felt like a stretch. And I just felt so happy because I felt really supported by the universe. And also that like my highest excitement was happening and coming alive. So then after the Hawaii project, I came back and then again was manifesting a Malibu beach home and similarly wanted it furnished, wanted it to be right on the beach, et cetera. And the realtor that showed me one place that wasn't furnished, she was like, I have another place. It's not on the market yet. She's like, but I think they're wanting 25K a month for rent, but maybe you can get them down to 20K a month. And I was like, well, let me just see it. And it ended up being like this mansion on the beach. And it was like four bedrooms and it had these two living rooms, like a dining room. The kitchen was nice and big and it was great because you could see the ocean front and it had like this beautiful open office on the second floor that you could see the sea and then it had this other little balcony area in the front and it was like a round home and it had like all these big windows and the bedroom was like beautiful. It felt like a queen in it and it had like this beautiful standalone tub and like this giant like two-headed shower and like a giant walk-in closet. It was just like a massive space and I was like, well, I could have retreats here. You know, I could bring people here and like use this home. And I did, I had a few retreats there and it was such a gift. And that was the year that I made almost a half million dollars. And at the time of going to see it, like I did not know how it was going to happen, like at all. And I had just had a client sign up for like a 50K package. And I was like, you know, I'm so close. Like I had a few clients interested in doing a year. And at that time, a year was like 70K to work, 75K to work with me. And so I was like any day now. And I was still going through the process of seeing if I would be approved. And, and they approved me. Like they saw my bankruptcy. They saw like, you know, but I had a good credit still. And they just were like, okay, we approve her. We're a doctor. She's a doctor. She kind of reminds us of our daughter. Like, yeah, sure. She can, she can have the place. And I always look at synchronicity. Like, I don't believe that I would have been approved if like I couldn't handle it. And I also don't think the universe would have allowed that. And I was approved and we went back and forth on negotiations. I ended up getting it for 19.5 a month. And on my birthday at 11, 11, the realtor sent like, okay, you're approved for 19.5. Like, do you want it? And I wrote back, yes. And so I was able to send like this first part of the deposit, this, and it worked out that they didn't care to have it all right up front, like the first month's rent and everything. So I sent the deposit in and then Yeah. And then client, like, and it pulled, it's almost like it pulled in more clients and it pulled in more. And it was one of my best years of work yet. And it was a beautiful, prolific time in that home. I created like 20 offers or something. And then, you know, and then things happened where I, there was these, these rains that that leaked into the house and it ended up creating some mold. So I had to move. And even that I found a home in three days, was able to get the deposit back to then put that into the next Malibu home. And that one was great too, for a different reason. It was in a busier part of Malibu, but it was like the whole house was on the water and it was very close to Santa Monica. So I was able to be more social and, and it was one of the, it was one of the Malibu houses on the stilt. So the water came under the house in high tide. So it was like a really just a beautiful experience. And then I decided I was going to move to either Miami or Ibiza where I love water. 
And then once again, I did my manifest, like as soon as I got to Ibiza, I knew I would move into Ibiza. And I said, okay, I'm manifesting a sea view home that's modern. That's going to have a, a great price for a year long price because the rentals for the summer are like triple what you would pay if you had like a year long lease. And sure enough, I manifested like the most beautiful landlord and it was like the perfect home, like brand new, modern. And I've lived here for a year and now it's time. It's going to be time to move on at the end of this month. And it's like, now what's next? Like, I'm sure I'll manifest the next one. And what's funny is from here, I'm going to a villa that is also right on the sea, like sea view. It's not right on the sea, but it's a sea view villa. And it's like, eventually as you manifest things, it just happens on repeat because you become the frequency and the vibration of it. It becomes your standard of life. And I, I really want you to know that you can have, and I'm using this episode with the Manifest Your Dream Home as an example. And I actually want to share some examples of my clients where they didn't have all the money either. Like, like multiple, I'm thinking of so many of them where they just like went for it and like, prayed for the best and they got it and, and the money came and they trusted. And so sometimes it's like, you're going to jump off the cliff and trust that the earth is going to be there to catch you. And it always is. And it's not forced. Like everything happens with such ease and grace. Like I easily found it. It easily said, yes, there was an easy rapport. There was no forcing, pushing, trying to make it happen. It just happened. And I had another client where her, like their in-law, like her in-laws gifted them money. And then her mom was like, oh yeah, but you should really put this amount of down payment. So let me just give you the rest of that. And so like everyone was so supportive to make it happen for them. And, and then I think of other clients too, where, you know, they had no record of anything, probably needed a co-signer and, and then they didn't even need one in the end because it's just that confidence, that knowing. And also just like when you're desiring something and you create those absolutes and then you find it in the physical and it comes to you and it's available and it's within reach, that feeling is like, and you can create anything you desire. And what you're seeking is seeking you. And so this is the invitation to like live life big, and your home is your sanctuary. Like I believe in spending a good amount of money in where you live and that you should love it because that's where you regenerate. That's where you sleep. That's where you create. That's the place from which things are birthed in your life. So let that be the place that you love the most in the world. It may it be your sanctuary. So if you love where you live, I applaud you. Like how can you upgrade it? How can you enhance it even more? Because the soul loves beauty. So if you wake up every day and you love what you see, like I, everywhere I've lived, I, I take pictures every day in my own home. Like that's what you want your home to be like, that it's like, I live on vacation. Like I love where I live that there are so few hotels that are like better than where I live. Like so few vacation spots that are better than where I live. And it, it's a whole package. Like it wasn't just the homes in Malibu. It was the fact that it was Malibu and it was like on the beach. And just like Ibiza, it's not just that a fact, the fact that it's this house, but it's like this house, this beach, the private cove that I have every day, this beautiful place that has like, you know, I love this island, the energy of the island. And I'm in the north where there's like incredible nature. So all of these together are really a powerful way to enhance your life even more and empower you even more without you realizing it because you just live in the field. It's a field of abundance essentially. And then when you remember, like I created this, I manifested it. Like you get reminded that you can do anything and your incubator space is your home. So it is important that you love your home so much and that it is a frequency that you feel that really uplifts you and inspires you. Like it is your sanctuary. It is your temple. Just like your body is the temple of your soul, your home is the temple of your being, especially in this life. So you want it to be a nourishing place, a place that you get home and you're like, mm, I'm home. You know, you want it to be decorated in, in a way that you love. You want it to have 
the light or whatever's important for you. Some people want the blackout curtains in their bedroom, like have that, you know? And my intention for all of these podcasts is really to inspire you and empower you and remind you that you are here to live your ultimate life and that you are a creator being and you get to create anything you desire, including your home. And that when you think like, oh yeah, like that place is only for the rich people or whatever, like, you know, I was, I thought like maybe I would move to Malibu when I was in my fifties and I was like in my early thirties, you know, and I thought that, oh yeah, it would happen like when I've quote unquote made it, but like, what's the marker that you've made it? Like who decides your success level? You, you decide it and it takes your action and it does take your courage and bravery, but it's also like when that opportunity comes, you seize it, you trust. Like I trusted, I trusted that me choosing this expansion through home would enhance and amplify my mission. And it did because I worked with more people in those years than I had before because I was grounded. I was in a safe, nourishing space. And then my life was an inspire, inspiration for others. And so it continues to be that way. And when you're living your most excited, ultimate life, you become a force of nature and you inspire others to do the same. So personally, I believe it's your responsibility to live your ultimate life. And when you do, you inspire others to live theirs. And then as you start to master certain things, like for me, home is like such a mastery. Like I find the most beautiful homes because I love my body and I take care of my body. So then it becomes that extension. And like, I find places that really can hold me so that I can do my best work in the world and I can show up in the best way. And I've loved, since I've made that intention of like, this is my standard and I will not go below that. It's so easy for me to just find like the most beautiful places. And sometimes I pay a lot of money for them, but for me, like it's just money, I'll make more and it's an energy exchange. So if I'm living in this high level place, it's just the energy exchange for that. And I'm excited for the day that I choose to purchase one. And it's the place that I'll live long-term but for now, I haven't found that place yet. For now, I choose to go where I feel called for however long amount of time. And then when it's complete, whether by my decision or whether the landlords need the house at the end or whatever, but generally it's been my choice to move on to the next place. And now that I was thinking like, should I move to Sardinia? Cause I love the sea, right? Like, should I go, should we go to Sardinia? Should we go to Cyprus? Should we check out um, the south of Italy or maybe Mallorca? So we're kind of thinking of different places, but we're so cozy here. But really for our lifestyle, Ibiza is not necessarily the best because of all the partying and the nightlife, and it does kind of close down in the winter. It's still open though, some things, but it becomes a little bit of a ghost town, which we also like. We like having more of that privacy. But then it's like the universe decided for us. So I'm really excited to see where my next home will be. And I know that I'll take these practices with me. And in the bonus content, I want to guide you through a process that I also used that supports you in manifesting your dream home or anything for that matter. And so I invite you to continue this conversation and join me in the bonus content. And if you're complete for now, that's fine. And I invite you into the manifestation course. If you're like, huh, I want to test out my creator power. I want to see what I can manifest in different areas of my life. And so with that, I send you so much love, so many good wishes on your manifestation process. I'm Dr. Nikki Starr. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time. Bye. Friends. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Dr. Nikki Star Show. Please like this podcast and share it with anyone you feel would benefit. Subscribe to the podcast to receive bonus content. And remember, every Monday, the video version goes live on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for being on the Ascension Path with me and for doing this great work. Sending love until next time.